I don't know why people don't respect this. You gotta respect, you have to respect. How do you not respect the spirit too? <laughs> hey guys, Sableye here, and welcome back to another episode of Crazy Climbing. Today we're jumping back into things with the Spirit Tomb team, and yes, you did hear that correctly, uh, Spirit Tomb. I did feature that in the last episode uh, as well, so if you did miss out on that episode, please go check it out. Spirit Tomb's fun, so why not? Uh, it will be on the uh, screen somewhere about now, but uh, we're gonna get Felipe here, and hopefully Spirit Tomb can continue its dominance. Uh, I gave you guys enough time to go check out that last episode first, so you do know, spoilers, we did go 2-0 last episode with the Spirit Tomb, so here we are, and this Clefairy is going to be a problem for me. Um, Red Jalecki Cali seems really, really good here. The main concern is that Thunder is getting set up, and just Dynamaxing, because I cannot do much of it against that. There's not a lot I can do. Uh, they obviously have a Whimsicott as well. I really don't have too many answers here, guys. I almost have to go Spear Tomb and click Hypnosis. The problem is, that doesn't work if they just go for Follow Me with Clefairy. So, obviously I cannot lead Incineroar. I think I'm going to go Aleki, and I, I'm going to go Aleki Cali just because it is my initial instinct. I definitely want Ndidi as well. It's a good sw go switch in. Um, and I think I almost need Incineroar here. It's Incineroar. Ursh. Ursh is really nice for the Cali, but so is Incineroar. An instant helps a little bit more. Uh, I'm gonna go Earth. Banded Sucker Punch may be able to pick up a little bit, like a little bit that's been left on uh, Thunderous. That might actually be enough to swing a game in my favor. Obviously, Banded Close Combat can rip through uh, Ferrothorn if I needed it to. Of course, if they get set up first, it's not gonna do as much, but Banded Wicked Blow still does about 50%. So, what are they gonna bring in here? Let's see what we got. They're gonna go Calicot. Okay. And Calicot is super annoying for me. Because there's not a whole lot I can really do. This is why I should maybe let Ndidi. Ndidi would have maybe covered this a little bit better. Because the thing is, they can simply click Tailwind right now. And slow me down. I know I'm Sash, so it's not too big of a deal. Uh, what I am going to do is I actually am going to switch right into Urshifu right now. The question is, do I want to Volt Switch? I think I Electro up. I'm going to Electro, and I'm pretty sure we're just going to see like a, an Astro Barrage come out. So I'm going to get Ndidi in here. Uh, it's not Ndidi, Urshifu in right here just to potentially put more pressure onto this Kali in the future turns. But we should just see Tailwind Astro Barrage come out. The only way that backfires on them is if I was Focus Sash. They're actually going to protect Kali, so I'm actually potentially going to keep my Sash alive, which is massive. And there's the caught with the Tailwind now, so... Now the question is, are they Sash Kali? Right? This is where things get interesting. We'll see right now based on what this Whimsicott's item is. If this is like a Jack Button Whimsicott, this is a perfect turn. But I, given the speed drop, I don't think it is. Yeah, okay. So now the question is, was that Sash Whimsicott? Let me take a quick gander at your team one more time. I mean, given where the options need to be, you either have Sash on Kali, Sash on Whimsicott, or Sash on Urshifu. Uh, given the way they protected that turn, I'm pretty sure this Calyrex is not Focus Sash. And they don't want to take a Sucker Punch here. So, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to pivot back out of Urshifu. And yes, I know it kind of seems dumb. And I'm just going to keep, keep spamming Electro Web to keep things in my favor. Kind of keep the speed up. And I think I'm going to go Calyrex back in. Uh, I'm going to go Ndidi. Ndidi will take a Moonblast a little bit better. I don't think they're going to leave their Kali on the field here. Okay. So far, so good with that. They're actually going to bring in the Ferrothorn. So, Ndidi, not the greatest switch in. Uh, it would have been nice to get Kali on the field for some big, uh, at least some damaging threat. Like a threat of damage, but could have just Wicked Blown as well. Like, why switch out, right? But obviously they switch out because, you know, this Wimsicott has a, uh, has a Moonblast that's going to go straight into this Ndidi here. Potentially Dazzling Gleam as well. I don't, I like Dazzling Gleam a lot more, to be honest, on Wimsicott. It's already such a passive mod that you might as well hit both targets. But that's just me personally. Anyways, Electro is going to go off, going to connect on Wimsicott for a little bit, going to connect on the Ferrothorn. Uh, and like I said, we're going to see the fairy move. It's just a question of, is it going to be Dazzling Gleam or Moonblast? It is going to be Moonblast, and Didi is going to take that very, very nicely. Okay, well, maybe not very, very nicely, but pretty nicely. This is where I wish, you know, you have something like Mystical Fire on this Didi, because it would really put pressure on this Ferrothorn. However, the good news is, my opponent doesn't know that I don't have, you know, Mystical Fire on this Didi. Uh, what I'm going to do, though, is I'm just going to help him Thunderbolt this Cot. Uh, this Limsa Cot needs to die. If they want to switch Whimsicott out, Helping Hand Thunderbolt's going to do some damage. Uh, it's actually going to be Thunderous, so yeah, this might, this is honestly going to do a huge chunk of damage here. And Thunderous was the mod I was concerned about, so getting big damage on it 
absolutely massive. Smart play from my opponent to make sure they preserve their Tailwind. Uh, however, I don't know if that was worth it for them. As Ferrothorn is just going to actually go for a Body Press. Uh, that is going to break a Sash of Regilecki and a lot more. But uh, that's not too big of a deal, thankfully. So, okay. The problem now, Ferrothorn's on the field. Thunderous has one more turn of Tailwind. One more turn of Tailwind. Uh, I can actually follow me. And I think I will go for the follow me. And I think what I'm going to do is... I'm actually going to follow me and I'm going to Volt Switch. What this will allow me to do is Volt Switch into Cali and get pressure on the field. Because that's what I don't have right now. Is What I don't have is I don't have pressure versus anything. So... Thunders is going to click Foul Play and into an Indeedee is not going to do too much. Perfect, so Indeedee does decide to take that very, very well. Uh, Regilecki is going to get a Volt Switch up here. He's going to pick off the Thunderous. And I'm assuming Indeedee can live a Body Press, but I actually do not know. So I'm going to go into Cali immediately. Uh, that will force their hand, right? They want to go... They're probably going to go their own Cali, and I think we're going to end up playing a Speed Tag. Which is probably the least thing... The thing I wanted to do the least here. But, uh, unfortunately, I think that's what's going to happen. I mean, they could bring in their Whimsicott first. But if they bring in Whimsicott first, I do have Banded Urshifu for eventually when the terrain ends. So, indeed, he's going to be able to take that very, very well. Opposing team's Tailwind is gone. So now we're at least, worst case scenario, playing a speed tie. Not sure if that's really what I want to go for right here. Because, you know, I don't. But there we go. Okay. So, we do get that Whimsicott to come in properly, as expected here. Uh, I am going to click Astro Barrage. And I think I want to just protect. How many more turns of terrain do I have? Uh, two more turns of psychic terrain. It's actually... <laughs> this is actually tough. Because... I wonder if Helping Hand boosted Mac... You know what? We're going to try it this way first. The thing is, I don't want to kill it. Okay, we're going to go Astro Barrage. I might regret this, and I'm going to protect, I think. Yeah, I'm going to protect Indeedy here. I think that's fine. Because once Psychic Terrain ends, we're actually not in a terrible spot to click Bandit Sucker Punch into the Calyrex. So, I can't afford to get Body Press here and lose it. So, obviously, yes, I am giving them the free switch in. Maybe it would have been actually cool to have just mudshotted the Ferrothorn. But this is still fine. This is big damage. Anyways, Whimsicott should drop. Ferrothorn's going to take actually 50%. That's actually pretty good. Some pretty good damage. Wasn't expecting that much. So maybe just a 252, 252 defense, uh, Ferrothorn here. Uh, body press going out. Indeed, of course, just protected. And this is kind of why I wanted this turn. Obviously, looking at this, it's not like I'm in a great spot, right? But the good news is, if they want to kill Cali, one, I don't know what they want to max anymore. You gotta, you gotta max the Calyrex, right? But if they kill Cali here, they're not killing Indeedee immediately, and Indeedee's gonna get damage off to break a potential Sash, which, once again, I don't think they are. I'm pretty confident in the fact that they're gonna be Life Orb here. <clears throat> I am going to protect my Calyrex this turn just because it does force them to Dynamax to kill me. If they don't Dynamax, they cannot kill me if I protect. And honestly, it might not even kill through Protect. So, And I'm just going to go for a nice little Expanding Force. Nothing too crazy. Last turn of Psychic Terrain. Yeah. Okay, I mean, I think that game's all, set and, all but said and done, guys. So we're going to count that as a win anyways, regardless of the DC. I uh, don't know if it was on purpose or not, because I feel like with them having Speed Control, maybe they know they still have a chance. Uh, I'm very, very confident. Banded Urshifu, Sucker Punch, Oko's Dynamax, uh, Calyrex. So that game was effectively over as long as I didn't lose my pieces too fast. And I wasn't going to get locked into Sucker Punch. So I was quite content winning the end game, right? So I protect there. Yeah, you. okay, let's say you kill Indeedee. You might not even kill Indeedee. And if you don't kill Indeedee, that's perfectly fine. Because what that allows me to do is sack Aleki. And then basically I need to get to a spot where I have Calyrex and Urshifu. And Calyrex will be able to target Ferrothorn down, Urshifu will be able to target Calyrex down, and from that point on, it's just basically game, end game as long. So there's one concern, and that would be if they were to max guard, but if they max guard and body press, I get another Astro Barrage off, and then I, it basically comes down to a speed tie still. So the game is very much so in my favor, and we're going to get Puddin here, and Puddin's here with a very similar team to what we played in the second episode last game. Uh, unfortunately, Spirit, did Spirit Team come that first game? I don't think it did, right? I went, uh, what I lead? I led like a Lucky Cali. So maybe I bring Spirit Team here again, and I think I'm going to. Once again, it's the biggest concern is the Venusaur. They didn't bring it last time, hoping they don't bring it here again. Uh, I still like Urshifu or Regilecki here. There's no Charizard this time, so Urshifu, because there's a Finny, Urshifu isn't as great. 
like before Bandage Sucker Punch was gonna do like 50-60% to Charizard, right? Here, now, now, now in this case, it's like, do I bring a Lucky? I mean, I think I'm gonna go Earth just for the sake of the fact that there is still a Porygon too. Uh, so we're gonna go with that, and uh, hopefully this is enough to win this list, so. But uh, honestly, Spirit Tomb is potentially, potentially gonna go 4-0 on the channel, which honestly would be pretty surprising. Already, worst case scenario, it's gonna be going 3-1, unless this is a really quick game, in which case I'll give you guys another one. But either way, regardless at this point, it's gonna be positive, which it's a Spirit Tomb, guys. <laughs> It's a spirit tomb, but we're gonna be doing this for the rest of series eight most likely guys just a lot of just having some fun I'll probably throw a few more series best of threes for the channel in somewhere here or there I don't know who I'm gonna get lined up for those but Just to get some uh, some actual competitive content, so we're not completely just fooling around But uh, they're actually gonna go instant Porygon 2 here, so uh, the game plan here Sleep powder <laughs> uh, by sleep powder. I mean hypnosis, so I really want to get Calyrex out of here. The problem is, I'm also really, really tempted to Dynamax Max Quake and drop this instant like I did the last game, right? That is really, really tempting still. Just pick off a key piece for them. But the problem is, if I do that, they get Trick Room up. Is that a problem? Honestly, I don't think that's a problem. Honestly, I really don't. So you know what? I'm going to do it. I'd rather get rid of the instant. I would rather get rid of the instant. Yes, they're gonna get Ruma, but I like I said before, I'd rather get rid of instant. They could switch it out, which I feel like would be very questionable. They don't really have a big max quake switching, but I guess Finny would be perfectly fine for that. But instant is the threat, right? Instant is the biggest offensive threat to me right now. They're not really pivoting into anything. Obviously, yes, I'm gonna welcome a threat in, like a Dragapult. But if Dragapult comes in, I have foul play twice. They're actually going to switch Porygon 2 out of this uh, turn. Taipu Fini is going to come in over there, so maybe pre prepare for Hypnosis. Maybe they know what Spirit Tomb does. Um, if I can just drop Instant, I think this game is over. <laughs> Guys, why does this keep happening? <laughs> People do not respect the fact that I can just Weakness Policy proc <laughs> my Calyrex Shadow. No one sees it coming either. <laughs> like, I get it's probably not going to work in the best of three guys. But, like, this is too fun not to try. <laughs> like, the rental code is in the description. I know I mentioned it last episode and showed the, the uh, rental on the, on, at the end of the screen. But it is, once again, in the description down here. So, seriously, if you're just looking to have some fun with the, the rest of the Series 8, guys, this is this is a really fun team. <laughs> but, anyways, we're going to get this uh, nice little uh, plus two weakness policy boost on this Cali Shadow. And we're going to get a max pick off. As long as it's not AV Instant, I'm pretty sure we kill. And I think it's a roll on AV Instant as well. So Incineroar up and out of here. So that's going to work. I don't know why people don't respect this. You got to respect. You have to respect. How do you not respect the Spirit Tomb? <laughs> they, they are putting no respect on my man's name right now. Anyways, Grim Snarl is here. Going to get... Not Grim Did I actually say Grim Snarl? I meant Grim Nay is here. Going to get this thing up to plus three. Uh, actually, I actually haven't seen a Grim Snarl, which is probably one of the biggest concerns for this team. So if you're going to maybe make an ad adaptation somewhere there to at least deal with Grim a little bit better. Like a big steel type could be cool. I just don't know where you'd put it. Uh, anyways, Porygon 2 is going to come back in. Um, I am going to expect the Trick Room now. Uh, not much I can really do about that. Uh, Finny's probably going to protect. Once again, not much I can do about that. I'm going to target the Finny anyways. Because if I get it, great. If not, oh well. I'm not going to reveal Ally Switch. So I'm just going to foul play in case for whatever reason. <laughs> in case for whatever reason. We're going to get the plus 3 Phantasm to Finny. This Finny will die if they do not protect. Uh, they're actually going to Dynamax. Um, gonna say, go ahead and say this is not what I was expecting, but it is a very good play on there. That is a very good play. It's actually going to be the P2. So, Max Darkness, maybe? Do they have Darkness on this P2? I could see that being big damage. I, I was expecting Finny, to be honest. Finny should protect, though, now, yeah. Okay, so Finny does protect. This is still going to be big damage, and the more important part here is we're getting defense drops. And this is going to do 50%, or close to it. <laughs> close to 50%, that's through protect, meaning that's probably going to kill like two and a, uh, one and a half, one, like one and three quarters finnies if it didn't protect there. But anyways, max lightning coming out, that's not too big of a deal. Uh, okay, now you're out of misty terrain, we're in le uh, electric terrain, not a big deal. Um, obviously, still cannot put them to sleep, so it doesn't really matter. We're getting defense drops here. I'm honestly just going to accept the fact that you're going to hit me again. Foul play is going out, 
gonna hit into his Porygon 2, actually doing respectable amounts of damage. And you're gonna see Finny with the leftovers, but I still have a free target into that slot. So, I think they needed to get Trick Room up, and I don't know why they haven't yet. Obviously, they can't get it up now. We're just gonna free Phantasm into this Finny slot. They have no switch in. Finny's gonna go for the double protect, is not gonna get it, thankfully. Uh, Phantasm's gonna go out. Honestly, even if they got the double, I wouldn't have cared. Uh, Finny gonna get absolutely obliterated by that Phantasm right there. Uh, Porygon 2's defense is going to drop again, so foul play just kipping up in that uh, damage output here. So, I'm expecting just another Max Lightning. Pretty confident that it's not going to be able to kill my Grim, um, I almost said Grim Snarl again. My Calyrex here. Max Lightning coming out, like I said, not going to kill me. Actually, with room to spare here, so that was a crit. <laughs> so, weakness policy Calyrex, foul play, look at that, that's actually damage. That's a Porygon 2, and I'm a Spirit 2. So, that's actually a little bit of decent damage there, so maybe Spirit Tomb's not terrible but now we're plus four uh, what I'm gonna do here is rather than trying to just protect this turn because that may give them an opportunity to get like an SD or something up I'm gonna ally switch because I feel like you're gonna see a protect from this ground on and just Porygon 2 trying to take out my uh, trying to take out my Cali so this is what we're gonna go for obviously yes I'm not hitting the P2 with this but I don't overly care uh, this game is effectively over as soon as Groudon goes down. I did bring Urshifu in the back. Groudon does protect, so did I call this dead on? Uh, but yeah, this is basically why I have ally switch for this reason and also the Sucker Punch reason. But just turns like this where you can kind of force their protects and you know they have to try to kill Kali. Astro Barrage, of course, I'm not getting anything out of this. But the more important part is I still have a plus four Kali on the field. Uh, Max Lightning, right into the Spirit Tomb. Let's go. Alright, so Spirit Tomb takes this, eating it very, very well actually, so... Porygon 2 shrinking back down in size right now, and honestly, I think it's just an Astro Barrage, and I'm going to actually foul play. I am really curious as to how much this is going to do. They probably forfeit, unfortunately, but uh, Ground is going to go for the double. Once again, not going to get it, so a little bit unlucky for my opponent, but it is 30%, so it's not like it's like the most gu guaranteed thing in the world going for the double. They did miss it twice, though, so a little unfortunate, of course, but I don't think even if they got either of the two, it would have mattered. Uh, Ground is going to drop to the plus 4 Kali. Uh, now Kali's at plus 5, not that it matters. Uh, we are going to see a Spirit Tomb go for a big ol' foul play. Are they finally going to click Trick Room here? As Porygon 2 takes mad damage, Spirit Tomb's going to click Trick Room. Uh, sorry. Porygon 2 is also going to click Trick Room here. Wow, I gotta stop uh, talking so fast. But I'm just I'm just so hyped up because Spirit Tomb is absolutely broken. <laughs> but <laughs> but I came most out of Astro Barrages here. I'm going to Drain and Kiss, and I think a foul play might actually pick this up. Is Spirit Tomb going to 1v1 a Porygon? Oh, we don't even get the C. Come on. My opponent was no fun there. You know, I just wanted to see if foul play was picking that up. I think it would have, but maybe I'm just a little bit biased towards Spirit Tomb. But uh, guys, I think that's gonna end our uh, our Spirit Tomb adventures. What I'm gonna do just one more time, I'm gonna throw this code up for you guys, because honestly, it's really fun, guys. Sometimes you gotta just have fun with the format. You know, uh, like I said, so crazy climbing definitely gonna be sticking around. Definitely gonna be uh, <laughs> definitely going to be uh, some interesting teams. Some very unique teams, but here we go once again up on the screen if you guys want to try it out. But uh, we will be uh, back in the next Crazy Climbing episode. I'll try to throw some more serious stuff in between these Crazy Climbing episodes, guys. Because I do understand that not everybody is like, yo, let's get crazy with this format. But Spirit Tomb is really fun, so if you're looking for something to try, feel free to try it out. It is really fun. Uh, with that, I'm going to stop rambling. I'm going to get on out of here, guys. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I will catch you guys in the next video.